Welcome to Building My Legacy Podcast. This podcast is designed for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to leave a legacy and will provide strategies that focus upon key elements for legacy creation, determining your desired impact and its benefit, increasing your legacy's reach by engaging key stakeholders, planning, prioritizing, and executing. Here's your host, Dr. Lois Sonstegard. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to have you with us today on Building My my Legacy podcast. I have with us today Megan Gallagher. She is just a delightful person and um, has an important story for all of us to hear and to really take in and look at the people in our lives that may benefit from her story. She is an author and a TEDx speaker. She is now working with adolescents, teenagers in schools, particularly to get her story out. She has struggled with anxiety from the time she was very young and has developed a process and way of dealing with it and overcoming it. So, Megan, that is um, a beginning. What else would you like to share about yourself? And then if you would just tell us a little bit about your journey. Yes. Um, First of all, thank you so much for having me on here. I am so just over, just so happy and so thrilled to be sharing my story and just in hopes of raising awareness and inspiring people. Um, For me growing up, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and I just remember all throughout my childhood and young years, I always felt so anxious. It just was this constant feeling of, you know, whether I was at school or at my after school, like taking sewing classes or acting classes or sports or at home, I always felt so anxious and overwhelmed constantly. And I just, you know, was always worried about the next event and what if this happens and what if that person says that and what if I am always sick or tired or so I started anticipating all of these worst case scenarios, but none of them ever really came true. So that was truly the inspiration. And also just in my middle school and high school specifically, there wasn't a lot of kind of assemblies or courses or people coming in and just having real conversations with us. There wasn't really a lot of that. So That is what inspired me noticing the lack of just, you know, kind of uh, older people or experts in their field coming in and saying, do what makes you happy in life, take care of yourself, and you'll be set. And so I was always just like, well, okay, am I the only one feeling anxious or overwhelmed or not good enough or worried about my body image all the time? And so that's what the inspiration came from. So tell me something. In the, your biography, you talk about how anxiety became an issue for you by the time you were three years old. Were there triggering events in your life that created that, or was it just something that was part of you? For me, I there was never an accident or an incident or an event that triggered years of overthinking everything, but it really it started just it's hereditary it runs on both sides of my family so you know my sister wasn't really anxious and then i came along and i was you know just at, even in every home movie at 2 years old i was always crying and just just before i could even speak always worried and crying and wanting my mom but um it just as i got older you know you're in elementary school and people start inviting you to sleepovers and to, and you go on field trips and, you know, middle school, high school, there's just more, you know, trips and traveling and you are becoming older. So you're more aware of your body. And when you go through puberty and I, I just remember I hit freshman year of high school and it just also a big trigger for me actually was change And so the change from, you know, going from middle school to high school, where 
it's 500 new people coming in and some of my friends were going to a different high school, just a lot of change, a lot of unknown and having to get ready for college and just who, like, what am I doing with my life? Who am I? And all this just stress and overwhelm. So I truly felt just so, I remember my freshman year of high school, I felt my first real panic attack where I was old enough to really feel, whoa, oh my gosh, this is so scary. The room is spinning. You know, I'm feeling hot and flushed and I really just, that awful, you want to just die feeling. You just feel so just gross and your heart rate is so fast. And I remember that so vividly. And then that kind of that one panic attack at 14 years old really was just the first thing of going on this whole journey of seeing therapists and trying meditation and going on just how do I become my best self? Right. So are there things that you discovered are, are symptoms that you begin to experience that are part of this panic attack? Because part of, for me, managing anxiety and panic attacks is knowing when is it coming on. So you yeah. interrupt, right? Before yes. it, it possesses you. So how did you learn just those basics of what, how does it begin? And what are those symptoms? So for me, I would notice that anytime a situation came up where hey, oh my gosh, you know, this family invited you to go on a vacation with them or something where I couldn't predict the outcome. I'm about to go on a flight or I'm about to go to school. I would always think, oh my gosh, I'm going to just all of these really just negative thoughts. I, what if I pass out in front of everyone? What if I throw up in front, like these crazy negative thoughts, but it really, it was all about, situations that I couldn't control the outcome and I didn't know what was going to happen, I would start thinking, oh my gosh, I got invited to this sleepover or I have to go on this flight or this long car ride or I have this test in my math class. I would start assuming all of these negative, worse, just negative thoughts. And I had to really just kind of pull myself out of it and realize that, okay, well, this is anxiety because, you know, most situations are neutral, like taking a math test or going on a flight or going on a trip or applying for jobs, doing an interview. Most of those things are neutral, but we can choose if we want to think positively or negatively before it happens. So my anxiety was definitely anticipatory. It was always before something would happen. Um, and I just remember in high school feeling so awful all the time, like a constant pit in my stomach in every single class, all seven classes, I just felt so like I couldn't even kind of be my best self because I had to just keep a poker face and focus on, whoa, okay. My heart rate just went up. Am I having a stroke? What's going on? So for me to have to like focus on myself and it affected my grades and my GPA and it affected a lot of stuff, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world because I think I went through it for a reason. And now I'm on the other side and I'm a healthy, happy adult who runs her own business and successful and I'm just happy. And I really didn't think that I would get to this point in my life where I'm just so confident and happy and I, I'm in so in control of my thoughts and my emotions. So part of what I'm hearing you say, Megan, is that for you, um, you took being having anxiety and that panic that came with that. And you looked at, okay, how do I use this? So it drives my life in a different way. So you took what was a really big, huge negative right? Mm -hmm. And began to look at how do I use it effectively? So tell me about that discovery, because that's, that's a huge shift. Yeah, so I just I think a lot of 
my mindset. And I really think that mindset is everything through whatever challenge you're going through, whether it is mental health or it's just with family or relationships or finance, whatever challenge or obstacle that you're facing or you want to overcome. I think mindset is about maybe 95% of it. It's just how you view it and how you just kind of, you know, turn it into a positive thing. And you're like, Oh my gosh, you know what, actually, I'm seeing the silver lining. And this is teaching me something and I'm going to grow from this. And I think having that outlook, my parents kind of ingrained that in me. So and also, I mean, my parents are so smart. And they, they knew they caught they were so aware and just very observant parents, and they really cared about me. So they were like, oh my gosh, at three years old, they already knew that I had anxiety because they were so aware. And they were like, okay, Megan is the more sensitive child. So we are going to be aware of that. And maybe we'll put her through therapy when the time comes. But they always wanted to take action and we're going to get through this as a family. And you're going to be amazing. Anxiety, it's not that big of a deal. A lot of people have it. Um, but yours is kind of more hereditary. So you're just going to have to work at it consistently. Um, but I really, I owe it to my parents. They just instilled this mindset in me of just don't give up. You are stronger than your thoughts and you can do anything you want in life. And just my own view of my own life. I really feel like things do happen for a reason and just, to just enjoy life and to not get so in your own head and start thinking all these negative thoughts because that really doesn't do anything. And it actually feels better to think more positively. So I like to say I turned my pain into my purpose and just now am the role model that I wish was coming into schools when I was in high school and middle school and just, you know, being like an Oprah Winfrey or just like a warm, you know, bubbly, positive person who is not talking about, not that there's anything wrong with it, but who's not just talking about, you know, get a good GPA. Here's how to prep for SATs. But it's like, what is about life? Like follow your passions. And so it, yeah, it's just a mixture of a lot of things. So part of what I'm hearing you say with that is there's an element of knowing what your purpose is in life, right? Mm-hmm. So how did you come to that? Because purpose also requires an element of reflection, I think. So how did you come to that and begin to find who you were? Well, one, it's actually funny you say that because when I was going through all of my struggles with anxiety and I, a lot of teenagers I know go through the anxiety and body image and the hormones and the peer pressure. And it's an overwhelming time for a lot of people, but I also, you know, I talked about it openly with my family, but with my friends, I was so afraid of just being judged or them, you know, thinking, Oh, this is weird. And it was, I think anything mental health, it's so personal. So I think a lot of people, you know, can feel a stigma or afraid to talk about it openly or just, you know, some people, I don't know, but, um, I, I always was, I loved any friend group I had throughout elementary school, middle school, high school. I always loved giving advice. And I noticed that. And I, would be, oh my gosh, you know, this boy's not texting you back. Okay, like come sit down with Megan and I will give you advice for an hour about any topic. I just loved it and it came so naturally to me. And I also, um, acting was a huge creative outlet for me. I, from fourth grade to the end of high school, I did all drama acting classes in the school plays and improv and I just, I would forget about my stresses. I, you know, I would walk on the stage or go into drama class and I just forgot about why I was anxious or what I was so concerned about. And it was such a lifesaver and it gave me so much confidence in myself. And so, yeah, I think I always knew that I loved being on stage and performing and speaking 
but I also loved giving advice and just being a positive influence for other people. You know, that requires a certain amount of introspection. You can't really give advice if you aren't able to see into people, see what they really need. And perhaps because of the pain that you felt within yourself, you could see it, you could feel it, mm. and and then speak to people about that. You talk, Megan, about a process that you went through and you go through daily to help yourself deal with anxiety and to stay ahead of it. Would you mind sharing with our audience what that is and how you go about doing that? Yes. So I love having my morning and nighttime routines. I am such, yes, morning and nighttime, sometimes middle of the day, even. I love having my routines because I think it's just, it's so powerful. You don't have to, you know, be an anxious person to have routines. I think when you just start your day with, journaling or writing down your thoughts or going on a walk or a run or exercising and eating a healthy meal and just doing kind of what taking a time for yourself and just checking in with before you go to work or go to school or you go take care of your children or you go drive them to school having a moment for yourself because I'm all about improving your life and how can I always improve because I really am just kind of obsessed with reaching my potential as a speaker, as a person, as a woman. So it's like, how can I improve every single day? Maybe that's meditating for five more minutes or eating a healthier meal, going to bed earlier. And I love an hour before I go to bed, I turn off the cell phone, the emails, the everything. And I just either read a book or I'll meditate or I'll use essential oils or I'll take an Epsom salt bath. And I'm really just big on, you know, you come first and it feel, you always feel better when you fill up your cup before you fill up other people's cup. And you just, I think it's just the best thing in life when you get to know yourself and you get in touch with what makes me happy? And you take the time to maybe it's praying or meditating or whatever you personally believe in. Just take more time for that throughout your whole entire life. And my mom actually introduced journaling to me when I was six years old. And before, yeah, but every day before, I I think that was third grade or fourth grade, every day before school, she would have me write down, okay, so Yesterday, you said your arm was hurting, and today you're saying your stomach is hurting. So, what is going on? And I just, you know, she always wanted me to take my thoughts out of my head and to realize that I have the power over them and they should not control my day or my life. Or just, you know, we create our thoughts. And she would always tell me, Don't you want to feel good because you deserve to feel good? And your thoughts will create a emotional response. Anything you think about, whether it's about what's going to happen at Christmas this year or with my business, finances, um, just anything, whether it's business, personal, we get to focus on what we want to think and what we want the outcome to be, which always makes me feel less anxious. So morning routine, what does your morning routine look like? You wake up, you, what do you do? Do do your feet hit the floor or do you have something you do even before you get out of bed? Oh my gosh. So I, I can pull out a scroll. I have about like 40 things, but I love right when I wake up, I just put one hand on my heart and one hand on my stomach. And I do really deep breath work where it's kind of, you know, very deep belly breathing for about 10 to 20 minutes. And that for me is I'm just grounding myself in how I'm feeling before I, you know, take business calls or go to meetings or work with my team of people. How do I ground myself, check in with myself? How am I feeling today? What do I need? What do I want to accomplish? 
And then I like to drink celery juice and I, I'm not a caffeine person. So I love to drink, you know, fresh squeezed juice, water with lemon, healthy breakfast. And I also love to make lists, <laughs> like just lists of the things that I have to do every day. I'm a big writing visual person. So I write down everything I have to accomplish and want to accomplish today. And I also love binaural beats and, you know, going on YouTube and just typing in morning meditation or guided meditation for positivity. There are so many for manifesting, for (laughs) being happy. There's a ton. And just taking, you know, five to 30 minutes, however long you have. And it just, it will always make you feel better. Just, I also love to squeeze in if I have time. I do like exercising before I start my day. So whether that's stretching for 20 minutes or going on a run or a walk or just doing, you know, squats for 20 minutes, just whatever I can, just starting the day off on a good foot. And I, for me, at this age, I know what's going to make me feel better versus I know what's going to trigger my anxiety. So for me, I don't jump on my phone right when I wake up because that's going to make me feel anxious and like I didn't take enough time for myself. So I like to exercise and stay hydrated and eat a healthy meal and write things down of what I want to do today and what I need to do. And then I check my phone about an hour later. (laughs) Got it. You know, I think part of what makes us anxious, at least when I think about myself, is fear, right? Fear of of repercussions, fear of failure, fear of what people are going to say. So part of not checking your phone all the time is, what if I missed an important message or call that Mm -hmm. I needed to do something about? So how do you handle those kinds of, they're real, but how do you handle those kinds of anxieties? Well, for me, I like to write down exactly, you know, what times are my business phone calls, my business Skype meetings, exactly what time throughout the day, you know, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m. Also, I don't book anything past 6 p.m. because to me, that's kind of like, you know, it's Megan time. The day is over. I did all the work that I could do. So I kind of have a time range. and. I know everyone has, you know, their own family and tasks and things that they have to get done. So if I, you know, if throughout the day, if none of my phone calls are at the times where I have it written down and I know what I'm doing, then I'll turn off my phone for five minutes in airplane mode and just like reset and just take some time to do some deep breathing because I'm not, I know I'm not expecting anything. Um, also taking quick breaks to go get up, take a walk, go get a healthy meal at a restaurant. Um, just really being smart with managing your time and writing down what time are you expecting certain things, or you have to go certain, certain places, do errands, go meet with people. And then when the times that you aren't to really dedicate it towards taking care of yourself, doing some self care, some quick meditation, um, what, you know, just anything. Yeah. So right now for you, what brings you the biggest joy in your life? Hmm. What brings me the biggest joy is helping other people and making other people feel good. I, I really feel like that is what I was put on earth to do is to help other people, especially teenagers, and just to be a light in this world because my whole life I've always loved giving to other people and just making people feel, I never wanted people to feel the way that I felt when I was at my worst and struggling, which in hindsight, looking back, it wasn't even that bad compared to what some other people have it. Um, but I just, the biggest joy ever is when I get messages from the teenagers or the parents or the teachers or the counselors of wherever I spoke and they message me saying, you know, so-and-so just reached out to us and they want to say that your talk 
just really amped them up and got them excited for their life or you, you know, just something I just helping other people. (laughs) So I, we don't have much time left. You have been just wonderful, but I have a question for you because I think there are people who are going to be listening. Maybe there's a teen and let's say you've just walked into a room and you've met this person and they are so anxious and they're moving into just not being able to focus and to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Where would you begin? What would you say to them? I would say one, you are not alone with what, with how you are feeling. And I know what it's like to be a teenager and to feel like it's embarrassing to talk to your parents or you don't know where to go, or is this even real? Is this depression? Is it anxiety? Am I making this up in my head? Is this how every teenage, I, I, I get that. And I used to do that to myself all day long before I sat my parents down and told them how I was feeling and that I think I need extra help. And I feel this is just, I feel like I'm dying every day. I'm having these episodes, but they were panic attacks. And I, I would also just say you, it takes work to feel better. So if you feel like, you know, you're having body image issues or low self-esteem, anxiety, chronic panic attacks, negative thoughts, it really, you have to take the time every day to journal or to say positive affirmations and to make changes in your life and to see what areas of your life can you improve in. Is it what you're eating or who you are hanging out with? Or are you happy at your work? Are you doing, are you following your passions? Are you in a healthy relationship? You know, just taking inventory and checking in with yourself and mentally, emotionally is the, the most powerful thing I think anyone can do, but especially teenagers of how am I feeling today and what is, what is causing my anxiety? Thank you. Megan, thank you so much. You have been such a delight. And I know you're going to reach some, somebody's life of uh, people who are listening. And I have a question for you. If want to connect with you or to get some information about your meditation process or whatever, can we um, back them with you? Is that okay for us to do? Yes, of course. The more the merrier. Um, I have my website, which is my name, Megan, M-E-G-A-N-W, and then Gallagher, G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R, Dot com and that has my TEDx talk, my books, my blogs, my contact information, my TV, just it has every single thing. <laughs> okay, super. We would love to connect and thank you so much. This is such an important, such an important topic, not only for teenagers, but for everybody. There are so many people who are dealing with anxiety. So thank you so much. Thank you everybody for listening to us again today. And uh, we can't wait to connect you with Megan. So please let us know, email us, and we will make those connections for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. You are just so delightful. And anything I can do to help you, I'd be delighted to do that. But I will pass this on to my friend, my daughter, whose friend is um, the anchor and see if she can use any parts of this. And, um, and then I'm going to see if I can find the guy at the Lloyds of London. Because I think, so here's the number one issue that <clears throat> businesses deal with. I do consulting to corporations and yes. executive um, coaching. But right now we know that 80% of our employees in the workplace are overwhelmed. Right. Right. What on earth are we doing? And people, we don't have good mechanisms to help people deal with that other than quit and move on. And so I think that there's, there's people who really need to hear um, how, how to do this and what to do in your story. Millennials are the people who are having the greatest difficulty relating. And so I just 
um, really appreciate your story because I think you will reach those that are close to your age group who maybe still don't dare share or talk about what they're feeling because they're not supposed to, right? Yeah. It just, it has such a big place in my heart because I just, it's like, I, I was that girl, you know, in high school who constantly, I was so frustrated, you know, my grades are bad and everything just felt, it was, it's all the end of the world if I don't get into this college, but I have, I'm having anxiety because I can't focus. I can't do well. And I just, it was so frustrating. So I, I really have so much empathy for anyone who feels constantly overwhelmed or stressed, or they are not managing their time well, and they're not taking care of themselves. And they're not having that good balance of, you know, work life, but also self care and, you know, just taking care of yourself. Right. Megan, have a wonderful day. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Thank you for having me on. That was truly, I am so grateful and really excited. You are so welcome. You've been listening to Building My Legacy Podcast with Dr. Lois Sonstegard. To book your appointment with Dr. Sonstegard, visit www.buildtomorrow.com.